How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to make some egg rolls, or some of you like to call them spring rolls. Now I gave this a practice run, so I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I want to talk a little bit about recipes because sometimes you get a list of ingredients and you can follow it to the dot and yet somehow the food will not taste all that great. The trick here you have to recognize is sometimes you have a target audience for your dish. Maybe it's for yourself or maybe it's for someone else. To make this really tasty, you want to have that person in mind because their tastes and preferences is going to be a lot different than someone else. An easy one is maybe that person is vegetarian, so yeah, you use all vegetables. Another layer to consider is you want to know what type of food that person likes to eat. What their palates are, do they like to eat more salty, more sweet, and if you keep this in mind, you're going to make this dish all that much better for your intended audience. So with that in mind, let me show you all the ingredients that you just cobble up together, wrap it in an egg roll, fry it, and then you're done, right? But there are a lot of methods in between, so keep on watching to find out what those are. Now here's the cost of the ingredients that I use. You can see each egg roll rounds out to be 25 cents each. You need some pre-made spring roll pastry? I wouldn't try to make this myself because this is going to take way too long if you try to do it. 3 quarter pound ground pork. I have center cut loin here because it was on sale but you can just use any other cuts. Half a pound of shrimp. Generally if you get the head on one, they taste a little bit fresher. One carrot. This may seem like a lot to put in only 25 egg rolls but by the time you put it all in, they do fit. This is the Viet Hong fish sauce. I highly, highly recommend to get this particular brand because I've tried all the other kinds before and they don't taste as good as this one. And one teaspoon of white sugar, about one and a half teaspoon of black pepper. You actually need that much. Normally you just kind of have a little sprinkle, right? But for these egg rolls, you really need that much black pepper. One beaten egg. Just beat this real quick. This will be used as a glue to wrap the egg rolls. This is bean thread noodle. You can see it looks like that. The important thing when shopping for bean thread is I noticed that they sold some very cheap kind of bean threads and when I looked at the ingredients, it was filled with a whole bunch of other kind of chemicals I did not know what they were. In this one, you can see it includes mung beans, starch, potato starch, and water. Very basic, right? They probably wanted to make the other kind of cheaper noodles thinking that people are gonna buy them to eat them. So when you buy these guys, make sure they are only simple ingredients like this. Now I don't have a meat grinder nor do I want to buy pre-ground pork because you never know what kind of stuff they put in something that's all mixed up and all ground together. Here I have center cut loin. Now I'm gonna show you how to turn this into ground pork without a meat grinder. So I actually froze these two cuts and they were defrosted. Just make sure you have some fresh pork or defrosted pork like this. And I'm just going to cut them into strips. I'm cutting them across any kind of fat over here because they tend to be kind of like ligaments and they're really hard to chop up if you just leave them um, in one straight piece. So I'm gonna cut them up like this first. Cut the other piece. So now this is how people mince meat old school style. They have this really thick cutting board and a cleaver and basically in Asian cooking, this knife is all you need to cut everything. So now you just go chop, 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 chop like this. Now initially you're gonna have these big pieces. So what you wanna do is chop it down fast, but when you lift up, go a little bit slower. Because if you do the same motion and just go all crazy, you're gonna chop down and a piece of meat is gonna get stuck to your cleaver and when you bring it up, it's gonna pull your meat up and it's gonna fly all over the place. So what you wanna do is just go chop, chop, like this. You see this motion? I'm cutting it down and then up. You see over there, I just kind of flipped it over and then I can just chop again. So you see this motion is very subtle because if you just look at it, it looks like I'm just chopping away, right? But really, my down force is faster than my up. And then of course you do this a few times and everything will be very, very minced. Now when you get to the point where it's a bit more minced and it's like kind of thinned out like this, you can go a little bit faster up and down and they're not gonna fly anywhere too much. Now, of course, when you're chopping, you don't want to put your hand like this because you're doing some pretty fast motions like this. So take your hand away, you know, put it next to your hip or something, uh, not near the cutting board. So you just do one handed like this. I kind of turned it into an omelet. <laughs> you just gotta chop it this way. I want to get to the bottom of that. So just flip it over, do it some more. 
if you think about it, this is very efficient because you have this whole knife edge here that's coming down in all the meat. So this is sort of like one revolution of a meat slicer because, you know, maybe it has three blades. It'll be like one, two, three. Anyway, so it actually doesn't take all that long to um, turn this into ground pork. So I got it in this little packet like this. You can just kind of lift it up with the cleaver, stick it in a bowl. Next thing, let's do the noodles next because we want to boil these a little bit. We just need one of them. Stick this in for five minutes. Now while that is going, I am going to peel these shrimps. These are relatively large shrimps. I'm sure you guys know how to peel shrimp. Just grab the head, take it out. We don't want to use a head goo inside the batter because I found out using the head goo sort of makes the flavor a little bit bitter. So we don't want to use that. We can use this in a soup instead. We'll just boil the heads with the body later on. Let's peel all the shrimp. I'm peeling it like this, peel the bottom. And then the bottom, I'm going to grab the tail and grab the body over here and just kind of slowly pull it out and the whole tail will come off. Now we can eat the tail too. Let's do that again. We're gonna pull the head off like that. I'm gonna grab the legs, pull it over. That's one section off, two section off, three section off, and just grab the tail as close to the end as you can and slowly pull them out. And do I have all the tails? Nope, I got one of the tails. Okay, so now we have the shrimp heads here. I have the bean thread here cooking. We just want to cook this until you see that it's clear. Uh, roughly three to five minutes or so. It does not absolutely have to be fully cooked because we're still going to fry it again. Now we're going to divine the shrimp in a super duper clean manner because I don't really feel like eating the, all the poo. All the poo is inside the shrimp along the back right here. This is the back on the outer side. So what I do is just cut an incision across the top of the shrimp like that. And then you want a little piece of paper towel here because when you pick out the poo from the shrimp, it sticks to the paper towel very easily. So it can be used as like a little cleaning block. So over here, you see I have the line of poo thing. I go like that. See, it sticks to that very easily. And then that's it. We did one of them. While I am doing the shrimp, I am letting this boil. This looks about done. So now we can take it off the stove. I would normally do this over the sink, but this is easier for me to put on camera. So just strain it out like this and then rinse it with cold water. Now you want to let this drain because you want to minimize the amount of water that goes into the filling. The less water in it, the more crispy that your egg roll will become. Now proceed to do all the other shrimp. There's not that many actually, but I like to just cut them all first so I don't have to pick up the knife and then drop them down. Now you want to be careful when cutting the shrimp this way because if you push too far, you're going to cut your finger, right? Because it's right on the other side of the knife here. So be very careful there. That's all I can say. It's not foolproof. You can cut yourself. I suppose if your knife skill is not too good, you can just place it down and then cut the shrimp in half this way, like that. You can just cut it in half if you want because we're going to end up chopping the shrimp anyway. So doesn't matter that it stays in one piece. So many times I notice that when you go to those Cajun food places, they would just stick the whole shrimp into their sauce or whatever and just boil all of that without divining the shrimp first. So you have all this poo that's inside this sauce. And no wonder when I eat that, I get a stomach ache because, well, you got this stuff. You got shrimp poo that's in your uh, Cajun sauce in those Southern crab and shrimp uh, bags that they uh, like to do. So in many places, they're not as clean as you would be at home because look at this. It takes, you know, some effort to go around cleaning all the shrimp like this. No one's gonna go and help you clean each and every single shrimp. What they want is to get you to eat and leave you know, turn as much profit as possible. Of course, if you go to the really fancy places, yes, they will divine the shrimp for you, but you're gonna pay a lot more. This right here is literally about $2.50 worth of shrimp. If you go to a restaurant and have this much shrimp in a plate or something, it'll probably cost you about $15 or so, $15, $20. And if you go to really fancy places, it will be even more it's just for a shrimp dish. Um, whenever you hear shrimp, they're like, money, money, money. Look at all this. I won't even zoom in, but this is gross, right? You don't want to eat any of this. So now I'm going to actually take this, 
run it underwater and clean it some more so that it won't even have even a little bit of residue. It's gonna make your egg roll taste really, really good. And then this thing, you just throw this away. Okay, I've got it washed. You see, it looks visibly cleaner now. Anyway, I'm just gonna wring them out. So you just kind of squeeze them. Try to squeeze all the water out of it. The less water in your egg roll, the better. Now, you got a little bit of water, but if you want it to be really, really dry, um, stick it on a paper towel like this, roll it around, soak up some of the water. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so now we got the shrimp here. Do the same thing, mash them all up. Now there is an advantage when you are cutting up shrimp this way because you're going to have a slightly inconsistent ground shrimp. Having it slightly inconsistent is great because sometimes you'll have a little bit that is a little bit bigger rather than a very very smooth paste where you can't recognize if it's shrimp or anything. Here you can see sometimes you have a little little bit of shrimp rather than you know it's just all into one big mush. So this is actually a pretty good consistency. Now we just kind of ball it up like this. See I don't even have to touch it and that's a great part. And stick it along with our pork and the shrimp. Ooh let's get all the shrimp off of that too. Look we got a little bit now we're gonna deal with this shrimp shell because there's some nice meat inside the head along with the goo. We wanna eat some of that. So put it in a little bit of boiling water like this. Add a dash of fish sauce. How about one teaspoon will do. And then you just bring this to a boil. Then it becomes a tasty soup that you can have while you're wrapping your egg rolls. Here are my bean threads. Now we want the bean thread to be not too long. So I'm just gonna cut them like this. Great, see, they're all very short now. I have my other ingredients. Just gonna stick that in there. Here is the shrimp soup. Now this is only gonna make about one cup of tasty shrimp soup. Uh, don't try to add more because it's gonna dilute it too much. It's on high, I just change it to medium heat. And just let that boil a little bit and let it reduce to about half the amount. And uh, it'll be very, very good. And then essentially you can eat all the uh, shrimp head goo. It's like mixed into the water for you to drink later. This is a carrot. We're gonna peel it. Now I'm holding at the large end, peeling it from the beginning to the end. You don't have to do it like this, but this is just the way I do it. You turn it around, make sure you get all the little skin off. Okay. Now here's a cool trick where you don't have to use your knife. Just peel them off. Okay. This is edible here. Peel it off. In other words, you're just peeling the carrot until it's all gone. What this essentially does is give you a very even thickness on all the carrot pieces. Now what do you do with this where you cannot peel it anymore? Just cut it up into several pieces. Shrimp goes in there. Now this pile of stuff, just try to arrange it roughly so that, you know, it's back to where it is before, just all in the same direction. And then just roughly try to have them go into slices. Of course, if it's nice and even, it'll be nice. Okay, we don't want our carrots to be any longer than one inch. So we're gonna cut them lengthwise like this. Now they're all gonna be nice and short. If you want, you can go and search out all the really big pieces. You know, there's not many. You just cut those up. We're gonna add two tablespoons of fish sauce in here. Fish sauce has a lot of salt in it. So this will be considered the thing that makes it salty. I'll add in one teaspoon of sugar, one and a half teaspoon of black pepper, One and a half. Eh, what the heck. Let's add the rest. Now you can go use chopsticks and mix this all up, but I just prefer to just use my hands and just really get in there and just mix all this up. Make sure all the carrots is fully integrated into everything. 
so that it looks even. You want to get all the fish sauce all evenly mixed in there so that you don't have like one big clump of pork and then suddenly no pork like some places. This smells really good actually. Mainly fish sauce smell right now. Oh no, so I got my hands all dirty right here. You can just squeeze it off with your other hand like this. Squeegee it off. So this has been boiling about 15 minutes. It's quite reduced. Not fully reduced. We could reduce it a little bit more, but I'm just gonna show it to you right now. Let's pour it out. Yeah, that's good enough. You just want one bowl of soup. And then all this stuff you can discard. You can pick out those carrots if you want. We can eat this little bit of carrot here. Now this shrimp soup, you can just put it on the side while you're making your egg rolls. It takes about one minute each. And uh, just enjoy your soup while you make your egg rolls. It's sort of like a treat because when you're reducing it down to so little and you use actual shrimp heads, it's kind of like the way you make lobster bisque except you're making shrimp bisque. If you happen to put in some heavy cream and other spices, yes, it will turn into a shrimp bisque. But in this version, I am just having it clear without any kind of creamer and it's really good still by itself. So all the better to get the shrimp with the head on. You get this extra bonus of having soup while you make your egg rolls. So we have 25 pieces of wrapper here. I really dislike having extra filling. Hence an easy way to make sure that you use everything. Divide this into portions first. Now because we're doing 25 pieces, we're going to do a divide and conquer method. We're going to divide this into five sections first. That looks about right. You don't have to be super duper exact because every piece of the one fifth, you're gonna divide that into one fifth again. So five times five is 25. When you divide it down like this, each five pieces, yes, it's gonna vary a little bit, but not by much by the time you divide that again by five. So I'm going to uh, set that over there, set that over there, and then I'm gonna divide this guy into five. Ah, that's about good. Now I got another spoon so I don't have to touch the batter or the filling whatever you want to call it. Now we're ready to do our first one. I'm going to do it on this plate so it's easy for you to see. Now I believe there's 25 in here. I didn't count. There's 50. I used 25 already, so there should be only 25 left. Take one of the pieces out. Now I have about one and a half tablespoon of filling here. You can go all the way up to two tablespoons depending on how big everything is. This is not an exact science. I just want to use up all the filling. You want to have roughly about this amount though because you want a good ratio of the skin versus the inside. When you have a bit more skin, it's going to be more crunchy. So you don't want it to only be covered by one layer. Then you're going to barely get any crunch. So from this, take your beaten egg and dip your finger in. You can use a spoon or whatever, but I just use my finger. And you see I cover two edges with the egg. And then I know some people like to wrap their egg rolls with this folded down already and then they put in the filling. But I don't like to do that because I feel like it's a little bit harder. This is the method I like to follow. You just kind of wrap it around. And then this corner piece, you don't have to worry about tucking it under. And then you want to compact it right here. Compact it so that you get all the air out. And then you fold the left side over. Make sure this edge is parallel here if you want it to look nice. And then you do the same thing for the left side. You see it's parallel right now. Then a lot of people like to just roll this out. When you do this, it's wrong because this edge tends to fly outwards like this. So what you need to do instead is put your finger right here so that you fold it a little bit in so that this edge would be kind of pointed in because by the time you wrap it around, you want it to be tucked nicely around the egg roll and not kind of go over. So when I roll this up like this, okay, I'm gonna roll it now. You see how this edge tapers down this way. Well, you can just as well get it straight and that's a little bit harder and you can just as well do that. But I find that making it taper off is a lot easier than trying to make it straight. When you make it straight, there's room for error where you can just kind of uh, come out a little bit. As soon as it comes out, it looks ugly. But when you go in a little bit, it won't look ugly. It looks just fine. So tapering it in is a little bit better than tapering out. Now this is done and we can just put this aside now. 
Now what I was saying before is people like to fold it like this, put the filling here. So let me do it once that way to show you what that's like. Oftentimes if your filling is like going all crazy, you can kind of shape it with a spoon a little bit and compress it beforehand because it's a lot harder to compress it when you're using the skin to compress it. You want the skin to do as little work as possible. So just kind of make it that shape first. And now we dip some of this egg on there. This is like glue. You want the most at the tip here because that's the closing end. Okay, so now you fold this in, fold that in. And then you see why I don't like this method because when you're over here, you don't have any of the skin to push against. Like I have to go kind of like this and then push it in. I mean, both method works. I just find this second method a little bit more difficult to uh, do it quick. Let me do one more. This time I have it on the spoon and then I can just shape it that way first. It can be oval. It's okay. And then just kind of scoop it in there. Kind of like a nigiri sushi thing. You know, that shape. Take my egg. Ah, okay, whatever. It's okay. Have a little bit of egg in there. And then I take this side, wrap it around. Now you see, I can actually try to push the filling using this extra little triangle piece over here. I can push it in because you really want to compress it without any air. So now it's compressed. Fold this over. I make sure this edge is parallel to here. This one, this edge parallel to the roll. And now I use two fingers, push both of them in. Now I can roll it over. Now, after you roll it over this way, you may want to go, oh, you know what's going on in the back. Just close your eyes, push your two fingers here and just kind of just, just roll it. You know, after you roll it, everything is going to turn out just fine. Like so. Okay. So I got my three egg rolls here. I'm going to continue and make 25 of them. Now I see the errors of my waist. You need to have this fold here. Why? because by the time you roll it, you want double layer of skin around your egg roll. If you do not do this, you see right here, I only have one layer of skin. This is the front and back of this folded version. There's like a bit less of a uh, single skin around the egg roll. Ta-da, all done. Okay, so we got one, two. So all 25 egg rolls right here. So I'm gonna pour some oil in here enough for about five egg rolls each time. This may take longer, but we're gonna be able to really use up the oil so we can discard it at the end of cooking just 25 of them. If we add more, yes, maybe we can put in half of them and cook it two times, but the oil will still be useful and that would mean we have to leave it around for longer. So now heat the oil up to about 350 degrees first. It's smoking a little bit. So yeah, that's right about 350 some. Okay. Now we put in five at a time. Now drop it in softly so it won't splatter. When you use chopsticks to agitate it a little bit, use wooden ones. Don't use plastic ones, of course, or else it's gonna melt in your oil and you're gonna end up eating plastic. Uh, don't use any chopstick with color on it either because then you're going to end up eating that as well. So you can just fry this for about three minutes or so, or just until golden brown. You want to fry it at least three minutes to make sure um, the inside pork gets cooked. Again, kind of like the tonkatsu, you want to take it out, let it sit so that the internal temperature gets up. Is it done yet? Nope. It needs to be a little bit more golden. Sometimes even though it's submerged, the bottom of the pot is hotter than the top. So you need to flip them even though it's submerged. So I changed it to the back burner because it needs a little bit more power to get it, uh, get the oil hot enough. Usually when you have a really good hot oil, when your item is done and you take it out of the oil, you'll feel it vibrate a little bit. So it'll be like sizzling and you can feel it through your chopstick. That's when you know it's done. Right now I'm just going by the color and we want to stick it over there. Uh, to let the oil drip off and we're ready for the next batch. Next time I'm going to put in seven. So I have it on this little strainer. It's draining. It's important to 
actually space them out like this because steam is still coming off of these guys and we want them to be as crispy as possible so it's good if we can just kind of space them out and let the steam escape then they'll be crispy when you eat it Maybe like that so let me stick in seven pieces this time three yeah if it's seven so maybe you can do four rounds or even three rounds if it fits. You definitely want a little bit of extra room right here because if you just fill it up so that every little nook and cranny is filled up, you're gonna end up taxing the oil and the oil will end up not being hot enough. It's gonna make your fried goods soggy. So you want a little bit of room like this. You see, I can fit like two or three more realistically, but don't do that. Just leave, you know, 20% room extra laying in there. It's okay to be fast here. Want to agitate it a little bit so it gets evenly brown. This is a good speed right now. Now try not to puncture any one of them because then of course oil is going to seep into your egg roll. I'm transferring them over here. You see this is like a cooling rack. It's going to let any kind of steam escape. This will free up my initial oil drip rack. This is a nice golden brown, so let's transfer it over. So here's the first two batches. I got 12 over here. They smell really good and uh, very, very crispy. Let me cut one of them to show you. Look at that. Delicious. I have the other six cooling over there, but let's give this a try. You can hear the crunch. Mmm. It's super savory. Usually when you use meat, you don't have to have a solid chunk of meat. It's just as long as you spread the meat around inside the egg roll, it's going to have this huge meaty flavor in every single bite. So at the egg roll place, this was what I was looking for. I was looking for a little bit more meat, not just cabbage in it. So if you really, really want more cabbage or if you're a vegetarian or something, go ahead, put in cabbage, put in like mushroom or something. You make it savory that way. But if you are a meat eater, this is a pretty good way to go. This is kind of labor intensive. I'd say about three minutes a piece. So when I did the preparation, I ate about 12, 13 pieces. So it rounds out to be about, eh, about 40 minutes of uh, prep time just to make these guys so that I can eat one meal. That is quite a bit. Mm, I really like the extra pepper flavor. Somehow you don't taste the carrots at all. The carrots are necessary because whenever I bite into these guys, I see the carrots. I'm like, oh look, you know, little bits of like orange color in there. It makes it really appetizing. And then also the pepper is very, very important. I like the pepper taste in it. It's just a really good all around appetizer thing. Mm, okay, look, it's still steaming. I forgot to thank Stefan for the $5 donation that got me to go to King Egg Roll. So thank you, Stefan, for your donation. Without your donation, I would not have went to that egg roll place and I would not have tried to make something myself. So the variable width of the carrots, it's no matter at all. By the time you eat into it, it's just like one big mushy thing. So you think it might be a different texture when you hit a piece of carrot that's really wide or something. Oh, that's not the case. You don't really, you can't really tell. It's just all mixed up, jumbled together in there. So you see all this steam coming off. That's actually a bad thing. The steam will make your um, egg roll less crunchy. So um, try to minimize this. Let me go get the other six. Now this is a meal. You got a huge plate of egg rolls. All you can eat, all this for about 25 cents a piece. In other words, about seven bucks. Same thing I paid for those four egg rolls. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you guys use this recipe and make your own egg rolls at home. If you're interested in supporting this channel, check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. And if you don't like this audiobook or this service, you can cancel it before the subscription expires and you don't have to pay a thing and still help benefit this channel. I also have a Patreon over here where you can get early access to my videos. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell icon next to that subscribe button so that you get a new notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching. Now I'm going to proceed to eat everything. Um.
Now the sizing is also important because you don't want like one big honking thing where you just eat one and you're like really full. You want to have like little bits. This is like bite size, right? It's like an appetizer where you can just have one, two bites and then you're done and then you're like, oh man, that was pretty good. I want to have another one and then another one and another one.